everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I have this beautiful page by Grazia Salvo and this is her Wild Soul book. I recently did a video where I showed you how to do this stencil background with pan pastels and I love the way that it turned out. I wanted to be able to do a little bit more on this page and everybody's been asking for a tutorial on how to color animals. So I decided to go ahead and pull this page out and I was actually going to start coloring it. You could see that I already started it a little bit right up here. I don't know if you can see that. I decided to go ahead and film it and make this a tutorial since so many of you have been asking. Now this is going to be on grayscale and the grayscale does make it a bit easier when you're coloring animals. So if you have this coloring book or you have another coloring book where you have a leopard and you want to color it, I'm going to go ahead and share my color combinations with you so that you can follow this tutorial. If you check the description box down below, you will find links down there for my Facebook group, my Etsy shop my email list and my Patreon if you would like to support me there. So first off, if you would like to follow along with this tutorial and you have this coloring book and you want to do it from the beginning, I do have a video for the background tutorial and I'll make sure that that is linked in the upper right hand corner. Now the colors that I have chosen so far, I pulled up a picture on Google Images of a leopard and I tried to match up some of the colors. I may be pulling other colors and maybe not even using all of these. I really don't know yet. So the colors that I pulled were dark brown, jasmine, burnt ochre, goldenrod, sandbar brown, and eggshell. So the first thing that I am gonna do is I'm going to color in all of the spots on the leopard. In and around the face right here and on the top of the head, it should be a little bit darker. And then of course, all the spots on the leopard are gonna be darker and then up here on the nose. Now this is gonna be much easier because I am going to be following the grayscale. I'm gonna start with the sandbar brown and I am going to follow a lot of these lines that are already here and I'm just going to do a stroking motion and I am following the darker lines in each one of these sections with the sandbar brown and I do have a pretty sharp lead on my pencil. So I don't know yet if this is going to be my darkest color. I may grab another color after I go over some of these sections here because I do have that dark brown and it is darker in here and when you're coloring animals, it's nice to have some different colors because you want to make sure that you have a contrast between some of the colors. But I'm really just following the grayscale on this, and I absolutely love grayscale. So many beginners are intimidated by grayscale, but grayscale actually gives you a guide and makes your coloring much easier. I think I'm going to make this my lighter color and then I'm probably gonna come back with the dark brown. I'm just using this flicking motion all in these spaces where I could see that there are spots on the leopard. So that way I could come back with my darker color and fill those areas in, creating that contrast between the two colors. I wanna get down here all below the leopard's neck and just fill this in with some color. And then here where you see the fur, sticking out, you wanna use that flicking motion again. I'm gonna add a little bit of the sandbar brown all in and around here. Now all down here where you could clearly see that there is some fur, you wanna just make sure you use this up and down motion or a flicking motion just to make that look like fur. And I think all in here, this is gonna to have to be much darker all around the nose. Let's go ahead and start adding some other color now. I'm gonna grab my dark brown and I'm going to mix this in with this color and try to create a little bit more contrast. And I'm only gonna do this in the darker areas. And of course, when you're using colored pencils, it's all about layers and a mix of the colors, especially when you're coloring something like fur on an animal. And this paper is going to take quite a bit of layers, so it's important that you make sure you get quite a few layers and different colors down there on the paper. I should have done over here. Let me come back with my sandbar brown and go over this area here around the eyes. And I'm gonna keep that a little lighter. There was quite a few spaces that I missed, so I'm gonna fill in some of these areas here. Now that I decided I'm gonna use this as my lighter color, then where the darker grayscale is, I could come in and make my strokes with that darker color. So I'm just using the sandbar brown to make sure I go over all the spaces that I missed. So I just sharpened my pencil because it was getting pretty dull. And when you're coloring fur, you don't want 
to ever use a dull pencil because you want to be able to see those strokes. And sometimes it's a little more difficult with Prismacolors because the lead does get dull a lot quicker. Okay, so now I'm gonna come back and add just a little bit of contrast with the dark brown. And over here where I see that there should be a much darker color, I'm gonna add it all in here around the leopard's eyes just to create that definition. Around here where I'm framing her face, I wanna make sure that it's much darker in those areas because a lot less light is hitting in those areas because she's standing in front of the leopard. Okay, so now I wanna start coloring in some of the other areas. I'm gonna start filling in some of this with eggshell. I think I want a lot of my lighter color down in this area, and so I'm just going to add some of this color, and I'm gonna go in a circular motion because on a leopard, their fur is very soft looking, and so this paper is going to help me to keep some of that texture. So the bottom part of the mouth down here, when I look at the Google image, it should be white, so I'm just gonna leave that area alone for now, and I probably, since this is the side profile, I'm gonna go ahead and take this eggshell and work this into here. And then I'm gonna use the white of the paper to just sort of hold this spot and then come back later and add white in there, maybe either with my Prismacolor white or my Holbein Soft White, which by the way, I have been loving lately. <laughs> but I'm just gonna come in here and add this color all over the place. So I think I wanna come back with my burnt ochre and I wanna add a little bit more color all around where the spots of the leopard would be. And looking at the Google image, it looks like this coloring page or the way that it was drawn is a little bit different than the actual spots on a leopard because in all of these that I'm looking at, the darker areas is actually on the outside rather than vice versa. But I think that this is just going to add a little bit more contrast making the spots on the leopard stand out just a little bit more. So now I have Jasmine and I'm gonna use this to come in and start adding some color all in this part of the leopard. And I'm just blending this into the other colors. If y'all hear all of that in the background, it's raining pretty hard here today and there is a thunderstorm going on and I really can't go anywhere so I decided let me just sit down and color a little bit <laughs> and I've actually been doing a lot of that lately so I did need to go and sharpen my pencil because it was getting pretty dull I'm gonna grab my burnt ochre add some color here under the eyes just because I think it would look really good and then I'm gonna go over that with the dark brown and then I'm going to blend it out a little bit with the jasmine I feel like that made a huge difference and I'm gonna take the golden rod and I'm gonna start adding some of this and this is going to create even more of a contrast and at this point I'm not even using the Google image anymore I'm just sort of making it look how I want it to look I want to put quite a bit more of this down here just to to make this quite a bit darker and blend it into that burnt ochre because you could see over here that the grayscale is just a tad bit darker. So you can see the huge difference that adding just that golden rod in here made and my pencil is a little bit duller at this point but that's okay because if you've ever looked at a leopard, their fur looks quite a bit softer. And so I'm gonna use the paper to help me create that texture and just continue to blend all of these colors into one another. I just recently colored a bunny and another one that I completed with Holbein's and it turned out absolutely beautiful and I wish that I would have filmed it but I didn't <laughs> and everybody was asking about that one and if I had filmed it when I colored it, but I didn't and so that is why I'm making this video. So now I'm gonna take my sandbar brown and I'm just going to start adding some strokes in here, really defining some of that fur where he has these spots. 
And remember, when you're using colored pencils, it's all about layers. And I'm trying to follow the direction that the fur is actually going on the grayscale. But it's all about coming back and adding more and more layers and then creating that contrast between the colors. And so I'm gonna have to come back again and I'm gonna have to go over it with the other colors because that's what makes all the difference in the world. And once you start adding the color down, you could actually see the strokes and the difference in the colors with the strokes just sort of overlapping one another. Okay, so I grabbed my chocolate and my chocolate is little weeny weeny weeny. And I find that the chocolate tends to be pretty soft but I wanna use this just to add a little bit more of that contrast between the colors. Hopefully y'all can see what I'm doing here because I don't think I have another chocolate pencil. <laughs> but yeah, it's just all about going back and creating strokes with many different colors. And once you combine those colors, that is what creates the look of the fur. And in some places, of course, I'm adding in my own fur just because I want to. And the grayscale is there as a guide, but sometimes it's fun to sort of do your own thing. Down here, I have to be very careful because this chocolate pencil I always find to be a bit softer than my other pencils. And I always have trouble with the chocolate Prismacolor breaking and not being able to hold as sharp a lid, so hopefully we'll be okay here. But I really like how this looks. Let's go ahead and come back with the golden rod, and I'm gonna start filling in some of these areas here and sort of blend in some of this color. And then over here, I would imagine it would be quite a bit darker, so I wanna make sure I get a lot of that color in there. And in here, I think I'm gonna mix it with something else. I'm gonna try the brown ochre and add some more of that in here because this area here, like I said earlier, should be quite a bit darker because it's the area that is right here up against the woman. And so she is sort of shadowing over the leopard. And with this paper, I'm pretty sure this is the colored pencil paper by Strathmore. And with this paper, you can add so many layers, and it is so wonderful, especially when you're coloring animals. This is my jasmine, and I just want to add a bit of this in here. You see how the color just, even though it's lighter, it just lays right over the top. That's why it's so important to have the right paper when you're using colored pencils, especially coloring something like an animal where you need to be able to see all those strokes and you wanna see the texture. And the jasmine is a fairly light color, but it does get darker once you start to add all those layers in there. And you don't want to smooth out your strokes like in all of these areas here where I want to be able to see the strokes from the colored pencil. I don't want to smooth those out too much. And I think I want to keep all of this white. That's sort of the fun of doing your own thing. I wanted to really define his eyes all in here and get a blend of those colors and then I want to keep this right here all white because I just think that would look really really nice. So now I have my golden rod and I'm going to try to get a really good angle here. I needed to sharpen my pencil again but I've got a really good angle and I just want to add some more definition all in here around the leopard's nose and eye. And then I have my burnt ochre and I want to add a little bit of that in there as well. And now I have to turn my paper the other way because I have to make sure I get a really good angle. But I've got the golden rod and I'm just adding some of that in here. But you want to make sure you have a good angle where you're comfortable so you could add your colors in and go the direction of the fur. And I'm just blending this out just a little bit more. Okay, so I have my sandbar brown, and I'm going to come in here and just add a bit more of this. I really want his eyes to stand out, and then I think his nose should be a little bit darker. So we're going to go ahead and fill some of this in, and then I think I need my chocolate to add a little bit of contrast in there. Now I have my golden rod, and I'm going to come back and start adding in some of this color just a little bit more. So I wanna add some here on the top of his head. Now I'm just being really random about where I add this color. I'm just trying to make it look a little bit more natural. And then down here, I want a bit more of the goldenrod. 
And then I'm gonna grab the jasmine and sort of blend that out and pull it upward so that it just spreads that color. I love the contrast that this color added with all of these other colors. Again, I'm just sort of moving up and down. If you move up and down, it will still create that look of fur. Now, if you were using something more like a polychromos, you would have a much easier time of holding that sharp tip, but with the Prismacolors, it's a little bit more difficult. So you could see creating fur is just pretty much a blend of different colors until you create the look that you want. And when I started this, I really didn't know where I was going with it. I didn't know really how I wanted it to look. I just pulled up a Google image to get some ideas, but then I sort of have come away from that Google image and just started doing my own thing. Once you start getting the colors laid down on the paper, it makes it much easier to just start doing your own thing. And you can see I really like how this chocolate is looking, so I'm just adding it everywhere that I think it would make it look a little bit better and add that contrast in there. I love the way this is looking so far. So I have my golden rod and again I'm just randomly adding this color in and I'm using that up and down motion with my hand. So you could use the flicking motion if you're more comfortable just going sort of up and down. You can do that as well and the same would apply if you were using a harder pencil like a polychromos and try your hardest to keep your pencil sorted to the side. That makes it a lot easier to hold the sharper lead. I have a habit of going this direction on the pencil and I know that I have that habit so I try really hard to try and not do that but it doesn't always happen. <laughs> it's very hard to break the habits that you have created with your pencils because you know, we all start using pencils when we're very, very young, and those habits sort of carry over into adulthood. And then when you start using colored pencils for art, you have to sort of train yourself to not do some of those things anymore. And I feel like I've come a pretty long way with trying to retrain myself with a lot of things. And that right there is something that I'm still working on. <laughs> But do you see how this paper is so wonderful and you could see all of the texture? I absolutely love it. Okay, so now I have my jasmine and I'm gonna start pulling some of these colors together. The jasmine and the goldenrod really help to spread those colors out and make it look a little bit more natural. And I'm still trying to keep some of the white of the paper because I really wanna use that white of the paper. And since this is an animal and I want to be able to see that fur, I'm not gonna go over with as many layers as I normally would because I want to use the paper for texture so that it really looks like fur. So now we have to come down here. We have to start really uh, working on this area down here because we really didn't do much down here. So I'm gonna start with my golden rod and I'm gonna start adding some of this color in here to create some more definition and blend some of these other colors in. And now that y'all could see exactly what I'm doing, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, speed this one up while I do this. So the last and final step is to emphasize the areas where I want it to look very, very white and create those highlights. And then we're going to color the eye in really quickly. So my new favorite white, like I said earlier, is the Holbein Soft White Pencil. I love this pencil. And I'm just going to come in here and add highlights where I want them. So up here on the top of the leopard's nose. And I'm gonna use this just to blend in some of the colors as well. Now I did use a lot of the white of the paper 
So this is sort of just adding a little bit of white in those areas and then blending in the other colors as well. And I'm gonna do this everywhere where I just want that pop of highlight. And down in here, like I said, I wanna keep this very, very white. And then that'll help to sort of blend in those other colors. And then down here where I wanted to keep it very, very white, this is going to help to blend this area in as well. See how it just blends those colors and pulls them in and then creates that white space there? I just love this pencil. So I think that is probably enough. I really love the way that this looks. Now for his eye, when I look at the Google Images, it looks like his eyes are like a golden yellow. So I'm gonna use some of the same colors. So I think I'm also gonna grab this, I think this is deco yellow. I don't know because it's so short and the name is gone, but I'm pretty sure it's deco yellow. It's PC1011 for reference if you're trying to follow along. But I'm going to just add some highlights on his eye. And then I'm gonna grab the jasmine that we used earlier and I'm gonna add this color in here. And then I'm probably going to need a brown, and I'm just going to fill in the whole entire thing. I don't know why there's a line on the gray scale, but if you look at the Google image, his eye pretty much encompasses the whole entire thing, and then you have the black around here. So I think I'm going to use the chocolate, because that will give me the contrast that I need. And then I'm going to come back and blend it out with the jasmine. And then I'm going to add a little bit more of the deco yellow just because I want his eye to really stand out because their eyes sort of blend in with the rest of their body. So I feel like it helps just a little bit by adding that. And then I need to make the center a little bit more black, I think. So I have my black Prismacolor and I'm just gonna go over that and make the center a little bit more black and then shade in some of these areas here and that area there is supposed to remain white, so I think I'm just gonna leave it alone. I don't know, let me try my Holbein and see if that will whiten it up even more. Oh, it does. Y'all see how wonderful this pencil is? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Love it. I'm gonna finish the rest of him off camera and I will share it in my Facebook group when it's done. I'm gonna continue working on this page. I have been doing a lot of coloring while I've not been feeling well and I'm finally starting to feel a little bit better now. So I will be having a video coming up where I'm sharing all of my colored pages. And so look forward to that because I have colored quite a lot. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial on coloring fur. I know that it has been requested time and time and time again. So I hope you enjoyed this one. I am going to finish coloring this page and I can't wait to see how it turns out when it's all done. If you've not already seen the tutorial for the background, I will have that linked in the upper right hand corner. Everything you've seen me use in the video, I will also have linked down in the description box below. I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you in the next video. Happy coloring, bye.